Hi everyone, welcome to the 7th lecture of the series on Linear Quadratic Regulator. In this lecture, we will discuss the numerical implementation and simulation of discrete LQR. Here is the overview. We start with the discrete LQR algorithm. Then we move on to the simulation of discrete LQR with the examples. Let's record the discrete LQR algorithm from lecture number 5. The main part of the algorithm consists of a backward recursion in which we start from the end of the time horizon and we initialize the terminal regarding matrix Pn as the terminal waiting matrix Qn. And then we go backwards in time and for each k from n minus 1 to 0, we compute the feedback gain using this equation and the regarding matrix using the difference regard equation or the DRE. Now, using the feedback gain at each time instant, we can compute the control input at the current instant. And this can be implemented as a forward simulation in which we start from the initial state x0 and then for each time instant k from 0 to n minus 1, we compute the control input using the feedback gain and the state vector at that instant. Then by using the control input and the current state vector, we compute the state vector for the next instant. And this we repeat until the end of the time horizon which gives the control input and the state vector at each time instance. Next, we move on to the simulation of discrete LQR, in which we consider a discrete LTA system for which the system parameters are given as in equation number 1. The simulation parameters are chosen as in equation number 2, in which we select the initial state as 10 and 5. Now, for the discrete LTA system, the response with the discrete LQR for a time horizon n equal to 50 is given in figure 1, which shows the plots for the states, control input, elements of the feedback gain vector, and the diagonal elements of the Riccati matrix. Here we can see that the state starts from the initial values, which are 10 and 5, then converges to 0. And similarly, the control input also converges to 0. And when it comes to feedback gains and Riccati matrices, we can see that the elements are converging to some steady state values. Here, the transient period of the feedback gain or recording matrices will be at the end of the time horizon. This is because of the reason that in the feedback gain or recording matrix computation, we start from the end of the time horizon and go backwards in time. Therefore, at the end of the time horizon, we can see that the feedback gains or recording matrices are time varying, but they eventually converge to some fixed values which we can observe from this figure. We denote kk as the time instant at which the feedback gain converges to its steady state values. And for this example, we have kk is around 40. Similarly, we denote kx as the time instant at which the states converge to its steady state values. And from this figure, we can see that kx is around 12. And in this case, we have kk is greater than kx. Therefore, we can observe that during the transient period of the states, we have the optimal feedback gain will be fixed. Now, figure 2 shows the response of the LQR for a time horizon n equal to 5. Here, the time horizon is small, so the feedback gain and recording matrices are not converging to some fixed matrices within the time horizon. Or we can say that in this case, the feedback gain and recording matrices are time varying over the entire time horizon. Here, the states and control input are converging to 0, but they are not reaching their steady state value within the time horizon. From the simulation response, we can see that if the time horizon is sufficiently large, the feedback gain or recording matrices will be converging to some fixed matrices, let's say Ks and Ps. Now for the LQR with the time horizon n equal to 50, we obtain the cost with the time varying in Kk as given here. And for the steady state gain Ks, we obtain the cost as here, which is same as the time varying case. Therefore, we can see that if we are replacing the time varying gain with the steady state gain, the performance is not getting affected. However, for the time horizon n equal to 5, the cost with the time varying gain is obtained as given here. And for the steady state gain Ks, we obtain the cost as here, which is actually increased. Therefore, in general, if the time horizon is sufficiently large, or we have this condition Kx is less than Kk, then we can use the steady state gain Ks instead of the time varying gain Kk in the LQR control law without affecting the performance. So far, we have considered the control input and state vector as unconstrained. In the next lecture, we include constraints on state and control input vectors, and this basically leads to the constrained LQR. That completes this lecture. Thanks for listening.